Good morning, Word of Life. word for you to sit down and just listen to. Have you ever been in a situation that is familiar and the conditions may not have even changed in that situation, but your understanding of the truth of the word has grown, it has matured. And so I'm here to share with you whatever you're going through, whatever it may be, it's all according to his will, his timing. But you know he can. And you know he will. So it leads me to a scripture that my mom, it was the first scripture that was taught to me. And it goes like this. And I'm just going to do a, a small piece of it. Let not your heart be troubled. And that's Jesus speaking. You believe in God, believe also in me. Then he says, in my father's house are what? Many mansions. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to do a little Pastor Mel here. Just that part A. In the Father's house, in my Father's house, in your Father's house, are many mansions. Then I got to thinking, what else is in the Father's house? Because Jesus' Father is also my Father. And He is your Father. So what's in this house? Salvation? Deliverance, joy, peace, eternity, all those things are in his house. But sometimes we forget. Listen to this now. John 14, 1, I'm going to say it again. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't allow your heart to be troubled. And I'm a thinking person. Well, if I have the power to determine what enters my mind, I have control over it. So when it says, let not, don't allow the adversary to attack your mind. Listen to me. Things are going to happen in this life. We're going to have trouble. But I don't know if y'all been picking up on this. I hope you have. Bishop mentioned this the other day, actually a couple times. He says, no matter what, God is still in control. And I have to say this, and you might get a little upset with me. But right now, I'm not worried. I got to speak what he's put on my heart. Listen to me. We talk about the devil this. The devil's going to do that. He's going to do this against me. Forget the devil. Come on, forget him. The Bible says, don't give him any space, no space in your mind. Don't give that coward access to your heart. Don't give him, as Jeremy says, a portal to your mind. That means don't give him an opening to your mind. Don't give him a gateway to your soul. Why? Let not your heart be troubled. Because you know he can and you know he will. This is a heavy word. <laughs> the devil, you know what he wants from us? He wants God's children 
to give him authority by keep bringing his name up as if he's got some power. Do you know at times we talk about the what? Enemy, the enemy this, the enemy that, more than we talk about the almighty God. What, you know, and I'll be honest with you, today is the most time that I've said devil, I don't even call him devil Satan, I call him my adversary. Days go by and I don't even acknowledge him that he exists. What's wrong with us? The enemy did this. He did that. What? I'm a child of God. You are a child of God. He can't touch you unless it's allowed. And if it's allowed, it's to get you closer to the Father. What's wrong with our mouths? What's wrong with our mouths? Enemy. What enemy? He's been defeated. Where? At the cross. And about his schemes. God sent someone for you to make you aware of his, of his schemes. His name is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Now, this is our challenge. Are you going to listen to the one that God sent or are you going to get your word from the pit of hell? Because the only thing he can do is voice something to you whether or not you're going to receive it. And I'm going to say this. When life trials come, deal with them. No problem with that. Deal with them. Excluding the devil. He has no part in that. What do I mean by he has no part in it? He has no power over you. When I, I, and I've learned this. As you walk, guess what? The Holy Spirit will let you know when he's coming. That gives you time. It gives you a word. Listen to this. This is John 16, um, 14, 26. Listen to this. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. And listen, now back to this, look what he says. He says, he will teach you. He will teach you all things. He will show you all things. He will reveal all things to you. Now, wait a minute. As Jeremy said last week, what does all mean? Get on your feet. What does all mean? Get on your feet. What does all mean? All right, so you know what that means? The schemes of the devil, guess what? He'll make that known to you. It's almost like this. The scheme or the lie will come, and it will come at you in slow motion. Because you're in tune to God. That means, guess what? When that thing comes, guess what he'll provide for you? This is a, look, listen to this. The Holy Spirit will bring all things to your real what? Remembrance. Know what that means? He's going to bring everything that he said to you. So when the attack comes, when the attack comes, because it's coming, he'll bring the right word at the right place at the right time, just when you need it. Just when you need it. Now, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, it dwells and it lives in us. His name is the Holy Spirit. If he lets me know everything, so when I see or hear a word, If it ain't from God, I don't want it. And then one more thing. This is beautiful. John 14, 27. Christ says this. Boy, it's beautiful. He says, peace. I leave with you. And then he says, my peace. He says, my peace. I give unto you. Then I got to thinking. Is that the same peace that surpasses all understanding? Is that the same peace? And that thing's designed to do what? 
is designed to what? Guard what? Guard my what? Guard my mind. But it's also designed to guard my heart. It's designed to guard me. So when we get to this point, you can get upset with me, that's okay. I'm sick and tired of hearing the enemy did this, the enemy's doing that. I'm sick and tired of hearing it. We know him. We know him. Why are we bringing his name up so many times? The only time you should bring his name up is to make somebody else who doesn't know him aware. But you already know him. You know his games. Holy Spirit lets you know him. And we're sitting around acting like we're scared. What about replacing Satan with Jesus? Because God said that. Come on, it's in our mind. So again, I tell you, let not your heart be troubled. You know why? I, I know he can. And guess what? I know he will. Prayer request. Bishop Smith's dad in, in hospice. Jim Summers, recovering from surgery. Keanu Jones, Johnson Jones, that's my baby. Healing for kidneys. I'm being specific. I'm among my brothers and sisters in Christ. Jeff, recovering from surgery. Linda Scarberry, healing. Nixon family, healing. Edna Hollingsworth, healing. Peggy, recovering from surgery. Melvin Jacobs, healing. Brother Leonard, healing. Pneumonia. I look at this list. We don't need to include Satan on any of this. When I speak over this list, you don't need to. The reason why is because it is Christ that can make a change. He can change any of these situations. But we must guard our mouth. Guard your mouth, which leads to what? Your mind and then your what? Heart. So, Father God, I just want to thank you for this opportunity, Father God. I want to thank you for the word. I want to thank you for the one that's going to bring the word today, Father God that you bless his mouth, Father God, bless his tongue and spirit, Father God, and that we give you all the honor and glory. And Father God, we exclude our adversary, Father God. You've already defeated him at the cross. So we thank you, Father God. We thank you for this moment in time. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, Lord, we want you, Lord. Come on, just worship him. Give him your praise, Lord. God, you're deserving of all we have, Lord Jesus. God, and we can come to you at any time and be in your presence, Jesus.
your presence.
doesn't matter, Lord, because to worship you we live and we know he's going to a better place to be with you. And I know that they would be worshiping right now. They're probably worshiping with us. So can y'all just tell them to worship you? I Our circumstances are only for a little while. So to worship you, Lord, is everlasting. Yes, Lord, to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. God, all my life, all my days here, Lord, I worship you. To worship you, I live. Yes, Lord, to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Oh, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the sweet presence of the Lord in this place, don't you? Hallelujah. Come on, give Him some praise in the house this morning. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Come on, sing it out to him, church. Come on. We're not in a hurry this morning. Sing it out to him. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Oh. Oh, we worship you right now, Lord. We worship you. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Come on, sing it out to him this morning. Oh. Do you live to worship him? Do you live to praise his name? To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. Oh, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. Oh, we want to worship you, God. Hallelujah. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, do you feel him here this morning, church? Do you feel him here this morning? He's here. He's here. What a privilege to be in His presence and to be among God's people. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you're seated this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. You you may be seated. Let me just take care of a few housekeeping items. I I believe uh, Tony has an announcement about the uh, chili cook-off. And the bake-off tonight, Tony, you want to come on around? Good morning, World of Life. What a great day, huh? Not because it's just Super Bowl, but we have an opportunity to, to worship and, and love God, right? Uh, just two things real quick. One, I uh, just want to make a re-announcement about the scholarship that the heroes in the World of Life are doing for any post um, graduate work for uh, past high school, whether it be going to a two-year or a four-year institution, graduate uh, as work as well. Um, I had a great question last week about if, if someone was going to graduate school. I know there was a lot of high school information on there. Just fill out the information that pertains to you and the institution you're going to and what you're planning on studying, and we'll take care of it from there, okay? So if you have any questions pertaining to the scholarship, it's a $500 scholarship for, for male and female. Uh, from the from the from our congregation, but we also want to extend our hands out to those who may not be in our congregation, but a part of our family. 
Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a broad, broad area. So um, please take time to do that. We have the applications out at the Welcome Home Center. Um, so again, if you have any questions, please just, just ask uh, myself. Um, Super Sunday, second annual Super Sunday, heroes and, and the wow coming together. We're having a chili cook-off and, and, a, and a bake-off. Uh, we want to invite anybody and everybody. Uh, you, don't have to, you don't even have to like football to come. All right? If you want to fellowship with us, with the greatest people in the world, come on out. Um, we'll be in the family room down, down at the other building. Um, starting around 5, 530, bring your chili, bring your, bring your baked goods. Um, if someone even asked me, say, well, do I have to bring chili? You don't have to bring chili. You don't have to bring anything if you don't want to. Just come and fellowship and enjoy time with us. We'll be watching the Super Bowl to about uh, halftime. Um, but it, it brings, it brings uh, any kind of side item you like or bring some kind of finger foods and things of that nature. Um, so just feel free to bring, come, and, and celebrate with us and fellowship and watch a little football at the same time. All right? God bless. Thank you. <clears throat> Also, the Valentine's Banquet the youth are doing. Please buy your tickets for that. In fact, I, I think they're running out. At least they are for the child care. Child care is being provided. The tickets are at the uh, Welcome Center. So don't forget to get your tickets for the Valentine's Banquet. The youth will be serving. Yes. And uh, three, three types of meals. I don't remember the three meals. Norman, I apologize. But uh, they'll have something for you. So please avail yourself of that. Amen. Let me just ask this morning, do we have anyone visiting with us here at Word of Life for the first time? If we could just see your hand, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but we want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Our ushers are giving you a visitor's card. If you'll fill that out and turn it in at the Welcome Center, I believe we have a gift for you back there. We used to give away the cups that changed colors depending on the temperature of the liquid that was in it, but... We had to stop that because we, people thought it was the temperature of how cold or hot they were as a Christian. So we, 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 had, we had to stop that. So I'm not sure what the gift is, but we do have a gift for you at the Welcome Center if you'll fill that out and turn it in. Amen. We want to give you an opportunity this morning to worship the Lord with your giving. I do want us to pray as we pray over the offering for our pastor and his family, our senior pastor, uh, Bishop, there with his dad this morning. That's why they're not here with us in service um, so our, our prayers do go out with them but please keep them in your prayers we're going to pray for them this morning listen that enemy that that brother eric was talking about he's a he's a busy guy i don't want to give him any credit brother eric but he's been a busy guy around here our, our pastor's family has been under attack <clears throat> uh, my family my wife is not here today because she's not feeling well honey i love you if you're watching uh, and, and several of the, the pastors and families and leaders here at our church, if you're not aware of this, let me make you aware, have been under attack. Some of the ministries at our church under attack. We need to bind together in prayer. Amen. Because I believe prayer works. I know it does. Amen. I know it does. <clears throat> I, I'm living proof of that. So are you. Prayer works. So as we, amen. So as we pray today over the offering, I do want us to bind together and pray against this attack of the enemy on this ministry. Listen, I know why he's attacking us because God is doing something around here. God is doing something around here. Amen. I don't know if you're aware or not, but uh, a few Sundays ago we had a, a lady divinely healed in the early service. She came in not able to move her arm uh, in in two or three different directions and left being able to move that arm just as she was moving the other arm. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and that's just one among so many stories I could tell you this morning about what God is doing here at Word of Life. So you know when God is moving like that, the enemy is going to be mad about it, upset about it. So we need to bind together in prayer against the attack of the enemy. Amen. On this congregation and our, and our leadership. Would you stand this morning? I'm going to ask our ushers to come. <clears throat> If you're visiting with us for the first time, we do things a little bit differently here than you may have seen in other churches. Our ushers don't come and pass the, uh, the bucket or the basket to you. We want you to just join in and come and bring your offerings and gifts and tithes to the Lord just like all of our other folks do. Amen.
I hope you see this as exactly what it is. This is an act of worship. Did you know that? Just like we lift our hands and lift our voices and, and we praise and worship in song and in music, this is an act of worship. This says, God, I worship you and I thank you for your provision in my life. And God, I look to you as the provider for me and my family. So I hope you join in this act of worship today. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we come to you this morning and we lift up Pastor and his family today. God, others in our leadership who are under attack this morning, God, I, I rebuke the attack of the enemy. Come on, church. I rebuke the attack of the enemy and I plead the blood of Jesus. I said I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Over word of life, over our senior pastor, bishop and his family, over our leadership, God, over this congregation, I plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I thank you that the enemy cannot cross the bloodline of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I speak healing in people's bodies today. I speak deliverance and freedom. God, I speak freedom in this house this morning in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray your blessings over the tithes and the offerings. God, multiply the seed back to the sower and to this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Come and bring your gifts to the Lord this morning. Have a time of fellowship. I'm going to be singing a solo today. I'm just kidding. Y'all don't want to hear me sing. I'm kidding. I can actually sing. I just can't dance. My wife says the music moves me, but it moves me ugly. Um, and that is true. Beside white man in the Bible is my picture. I can't dance. Um, I got something kind of special I wanted to do. I know it's off the wall, but that's who I am. I am going to do a selfie video for Pastor and Sister Smith who are down there with his dad right now. And so, as a transition into worship, if you don't mind, um, I would like for everybody to stand up and, you know, this is Super Bowl Sunday, so you're already ready to scream and holler, and instead of cussing at your TV, how about you give Pastor Smith and his wife a huge shout out of love and respect. Y'all ready? Three, two, one. Oh yeah, let's do you guys. 
guys, through you guys. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Now please stay standing for worship.
Aren't you glad Jesus chased you down one day? Aren't you glad He didn't give up on you? You had almost given up on yourself, but Jesus didn't give up on you. Hallelujah. I know you ran, but you couldn't hide. He found you anyway. Hallelujah. Lifted you out of a miry pit. Set your feet on a solid rock to stay. And you're here today to worship with us. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being here today. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team and band. You can be seated this morning. I want to bring a word to you today, as time allows, about Jesus Christ being the same yesterday, today, and forever. Obviously, we won't finish all of that this morning. But if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. And then we're going to go quickly to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. Scripture from the New Testament and a Scripture from the Old Testament, both basically stating the same thing, that God does not change. He is a changeless being. Hebrews 13 and 8. Why don't you say it with me? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Malachi 3.6 simply says this, For I am the Lord your God, and I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O Jacob. I love that scripture because of what it says. It says, God is saying, I don't change, and because I don't change, you are not consumed. Anybody thankful not to be consumed this morning? Hallelujah. In other words, God is not a whimsical God. He's not a God who changes His mind from moment to moment. He's not a God who's having a bad day and so He takes it out on you. <clears throat> Amen? He, he's not a God who's, who is given over to His emotions from moment to moment and so He changes what He does from second to second. That's not, that's not I, the God we serve. That's not our God. The Bible says our God is the same, and because He's the same, you and I are not consumed. I'm thankful this morning I'm not consumed, hallelujah, because I serve a loving, gracious, merciful, mighty God. Amen. However, today I want to tell you that things change all around us. Things are constantly changing, are they not? I know you may not believe this, but I don't exactly look the same way I did when I was 20 or 16 or 17. In fact, I was looking the other day for a picture that I used to send around uh, Sister Sandy when I did advertisements for revivals where I would be, I would uh, uh, send a a picture to the local paper from not, not all the time, but from time to time the church would ask for something like that. I'd send them a picture and I was trying to find that thing the other day. I couldn't find it, but I remembered. I, I had a, a white suit on, Brother Mel, because uh, that was the style back in, in that day. had a white suit and, and a peach shirt, and, and, and I had hair. Because that was also the style back in, in that day. I had some hair. I, I don't exactly look like I did, amen. I, I feel like that country music song, I ain't as good as I once was, but I was good once as I ever was, amen. I, Things are constantly changing all around us. And so in a world of constant change, it's good to know this morning that we serve a God who doesn't change. Hallelujah. He hasn't lost His ability. He hasn't lost His mental capacity. He hasn't lost His strength. He hasn't lost His intellect. He hasn't lost His wisdom. He hasn't lost His dominion. He hasn't lost His authority. I said we serve a God who does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah to His name. Things change, though. Listen, when, my, when I first came along, my parents had a, a Corvette. I wish I had that thing today. It would probably be worth some money, and I'm sure they wish so as well. But they had a Corvette. So when I came along, th- there was no law about baby seats and car seats and that kind of thing. So Sister Sandy, they would put me in a little cubby hole in that Corvette because it was just a two-seat car. So there was Mom and Dad, and there, was, there I was in the back of that little cubby hole. That's where they put me. 
I, I don't know if they wore seat belts or not. The, you certainly didn't. You were not required to wear a seat belt at that time. I know we wear seat belts today, and you should wear a seat belt for safety reasons. But but things change. Now you got to have a car seat, and, and the car seat's got to be a certain way, and the car seat's got to be a certain size with a certain size baby. And, and uh, you know, I, I mean, it's so complicated. Have you ever tried to put a car seat in a car, take a car seat out of a car? Listen, we bought two car seats because we didn't want to have to do that. It was too complicated. So we just bought two, put one in one car and one in the other, and we just left them alone. In fact, the girls still ride in the... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They, 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 they don't. Listen, back in my day, we ate real food. None of this frou-frou stuff. All you people with your kale. It's ridiculous. I'm sick of all this healthy stuff. We ate real food. Biscuits and gravy... Come on. Listen, we didn't just eat fried chicken. We ate chicken fried chicken. We fried the chicken and then we put another chicken with the fried chicken. Chicken fried chicken. Steak and gravy. Hey, listen, I, I'm just saying, I'll let you draw your own conclusion, but I'm, I'm just saying, the divorce rate has gone up. The depression rate has gone up. The suicide rate has gone up. And it all started around the same time y'all started eating this healthy junk. I'm just saying. Get yourself some fried chicken after church today. Steak and eggs. Things change. We didn't wear skinny jeans in my day either. Skinny jeans. And we didn't put fake butter on stuff. We didn't put it on it and call it parquet or whatever. The, no, no, there was no parquet. It was real butter. In fact, before my generation, it was lard. And look how tough that generation was. Maybe we need to eat some more lard. I don't know. Things change. But thank God we serve a God today. Hallelujah. Who doesn't change? Someone wrote, my body keeps adjusting under middle age attack. My waistline's pushing forward while my hairline's falling back. Hey, diddle diddle, I've got a bulge in my middle and hope to whittle it soon. But eating such fun that I won't get it done till my dish runs away with my spoon. <laughs> Listen, we, we live in such a world, things are changing so fast. You can go today, you can be on the East Coast. Eat breakfast in Boston. Be in the middle of the state somewhere. Eat lunch in Lexington or, or Louisiana. And by the end of the day, you can eat supper in San Francisco, California. Man, that's, that's, that's a lot of change. The world is changing so fast. We used to sing a song in church. I don't know if I can do it justice this morning, but, but it, it, it said something like this. Yesterday, things were different. Tomorrow, they'll be different again. Oh, but Jesus, He'll never, ever change. Oh, Jesus is always the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I will change, but Jesus will not change. You will change, but Jesus will not change. The church may change, but Jesus will not change. Governments come and go, but Jesus won't change. Countries rise and fall. Governments rise and fall. But Jesus will always be on the throne. Hallelujah. He does not change this morning. Listen, everything else may change around us. We may change, but Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the, read, the good news about that this morning is simply this. I'm glad I don't have to uh, trust in things that don't change. I don't have to trust in myself. I don't have to trust in you. No offense. We don't have to trust 
in our government. No offense. We don't have to trust in the leaders of our nation. No offense. Because they are likely to change from day to day and week to week and from election to election. But I can trust this morning in somebody who does not change and his name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Listen, we've had great leaders of our nation over the years. You, you look back at our history, and I'm, I'm a big history buff, but you think about some of the leaders of our nation, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, so many others I, I could mention this morning. But if you brought those people back today, they would not be able to deal with the problems of our society and our culture because of how quickly things have changed and how much change there has been over that amount of time. But there's another great leader who will never abdicate his throne. Ooh, hallelujah. I said there's another person this morning who will never lose his authority. He'll never lose his place. There'll never be a question about the election because there is no election. He was from everlasting to everlasting. He was from the beginning. He's in the middle. He's at the end. He always was. He always is. And He always will be. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. There's another great leader who can handle the problems of our society and every generation because His wisdom is eternal. His knowledge limitless. His power knows no bounds. His authority is supreme. He has the answer for yesterday's problems. He's got the answer for today's problems. He's got the answer for tomorrow's problems. In fact, can I just go ahead and tell you this morning, He was the answer yesterday. He is the answer today. And He'll always be the answer for tomorrow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why we don't have to trust or put our hope in man. Whew, hallelujah. We've got a greater hope this morning, and His name is Jesus. They've tried to get rid of Him over the years. They've tried to cancel Him out. They've tried to erase His name. They've tried to get rid of Him now. But guess what? He'll never be erased. He'll never be canceled out. He'll never be defeated. Hallelujah. He's got an undefeated track record, and He'll always be undefeated. There's not an enemy that can rise up. Listen to me this morning. Can I just tell you that, that it, it, it's not like we sometimes see it on TV, you know, where they have Jesus here, and they put the devil kind of up beside Jesus as if they're even on equal terms. They, they've never been on equal terms. They, 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 they've never been on equal terms. In fact, Jesus is so far above and beyond. Listen, every power, every principality, every spiritual darkness. Oh my God, he, he is so far and beyond. Listen, Jesus is way on the throne up there and the devil is way down here. In fact, the Bible says not only is the devil under Jesus, the devil is under you. The devil's under your feet because you serve Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes we think of Jesus as being less than the Father. We think there's some hierarchy in the Trinity. There's not. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God. He's always been God. There's, there's no... There, Jesus didn't finish His earthly ministry and all of a sudden get promoted. That's how we look at Him sometimes. We look at Jesus as if, okay, He came to earth and, and he, he did all these things and, and he, 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 he suffered through and, and He made the cross and, and He was raised and, 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 and He ascended and when He said He got a promotion. That's not that. No, 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 no. He's always been God. He's always been God. Not only is Jesus still the same, He's not lost His power. He's not lost His strength, His dominion, His authority, His efficacy. None of that. He will always be and has always been far above every, princi every principality and every power. Above every critic, above every naysayer, above every uh, scoffer, all the unbelievers. Hallelujah. He's always been and He always will be on the throne. He's God. In fact, the Bible says it this way in John chapter 8, verse 56 through 59. This, this is Jesus talking. Here's what He says. He says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews said to him, You are not even 50 years old. You are not even as old as Pastor Philip. How can you say that you've seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, listen to this, before Abraham was, what? I am. I am. 
I don't know if you understand what Jesus is telling them, but he is quoting the Bible in in Genesis where God showed up to Moses and said, you tell them I am that I am. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is telling these Pharisees and religious leaders and zealots, he's telling them before Abraham was, not I was, before Abraham was, I am. I was there before Abraham was, Jesus says. John 1, 1 through 3 says it like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. He was God. He is God. He's always been God. He was there in the beginning when God said, Let us make man in our image. Who do you think He's talking to? He's talking to Himself. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're having a conversation. You know, like you do sometimes with yourself. And we're made in the image of God, so that's all right. We talked about talking to yourself this morning in the early service. That's actually biblical. But anyway, so God says, let us make man in our image. So Jesus was there from the very beginning. He was there walking in the garden with Adam and Eve, looking for Adam and Eve after he knew they had sinned. He was on the boat with Noah. He was bringing life to Abraham's body and Sarah's womb. He was wrestling with Jacob to make him a prince. He was ordering the steps of Joseph to bring him to his destiny. He was talking with Moses from the burning bush. He was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud of glory by day. He was holding back an entire sea with one mighty breath. He stopped the earth from rotating, causing the sun to stand still for Joshua. He brought down the walls of Jericho with one mighty stomp of his foot. He was communing with the psalmist David as he watched over his father's sheep. He was there with David on the battlefield against Goliath. He was with the widow woman when the food ran out. He was with her when she filled the jars of oil. He was with Daniel in the lion's den. He was with the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. He was with Isaiah when they cut him in two. He was with Jeremiah when they persecuted him. He was with Peter in his yesterday when Peter betrayed him. He was with Peter when he restored him. And he was with Peter and John when they went into the temple to heal the lame man. He was with Paul on his yesterday on the road to Damascus. He was with Paul on the Isle of Malta. He was with John on the Isle of Patmos. What in the world are you saying, Pastor Philip? I'm telling you that he was there from the beginning. He was there at all times. He'll always be there. He promises, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be there for you. Oh, come on, somebody. You didn't realize it, but he was there when you were strung out on drugs. He was there when you were laying in the bed with the person you shouldn't have been with. He was there when you were in the bar, on the bar stool, out of your mind. He was there when you were in your depression. He was there when you were in your suicidal thoughts. He was there when you were going through your storm. He was there when you were going through your trouble. He was there when you are going through your trial. He's always been there. Come on, give God praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. He was there when you messed up. And here's what I love about it. Even when you messed up in your yesterday, it didn't cause Him to leave you today. Hallelujah. Thank God He knows what I did yesterday and He's still with me today. As the movie says, He knows what you did last summer. Oh, and He he still didn't leave you. He knows what you did last year. And He still didn't leave you alone. He knows when you messed up. And He still chased after you. Hallelujah. And brought you to His side. Praise God. God can take care of the problems of yesterday. Here's what I want you to see this morning. I'm going to help somebody with your yesterday. I'm going to help you with you yesterday. Somebody's going to get free this morning. I believe it. I believe it. But you stay with me this morning. Here's what I want you to see. In the story of the prodigal son, and Pastor Mel's done such a marvelous job about dissecting that thing and parsing it out and cutting every word and every piece and every... <laughs> yes, he has. Amen. <laughs> I'm just picking on him a little bit. He's been in the prodigal son now for uh, uh, years. It, uh, no, no, months, but weeks anyway, uh, on Wednesday night, telling us about the prodigal son. But in the story of the prodigal and, and has done a fantastic job. Love to hear Pastor Mel teach. But in the story of the prodigal son, here's what I want you to see. You need to stop looking at your past as if they were wasted years. You may have squandered some things. That's what the prodigal did. He squandered. 
That may be King James Version, but what it, he, squandered, he squandered some things. But the years were not wasted. And I want to encourage somebody this morning, you feel like you've got some wasted years. You feel like that over the past several years maybe, some of those years were wasted. You feel like, oh, if only I had come to the Lord earlier. You came to God exactly at the right time, at the right moment when you were supposed... Yeah. Don't you look back over your life and say, oh, I wasted so many years. I've heard people say that. I wasted so much time. I wasted so many years. No, you didn't. All the years you think you wasted, the Jesus who is the same today and tomorrow is the same yesterday. The God who's with you today and tomorrow was with you in your yesterday. He saw the prodigal in the pig pen. He saw you in your mess. And guess what? Those were not wasted years. Those were years when He was using, hallelujah, the pig pen to get your heart right with God. He was using all those things in your past. He's used all those things in your yesterday to bring you to where you are today. And so there are no wasted years in God. There is no wasted time in God. Every year that you think you wasted, God has used it. And is still using it to help you in your relationship with Him. And here's the thing. When the prodigal came back, everything was restored. Everything was restored. Did you catch that? Wait a minute, I thought he squandered. He did. But when he came back, the father put on him a ring and a robe and the sandals as if nothing was lost. He put him right, listen, he put him right back in the same position. Are you getting this? We serve a God who can restore the years. I said, we serve a God who can restore the years. We serve a God who can eradicate the effects of the years of yesterday. When the prodigal came back, he was put in exactly the same position as he was when he left. Hallelujah. He still had an inheritance. He was still the son. He still had the robe. He still had the authority. He still had everything that he thought he had lost and squandered away. He was restored in every way. So don't you worry about your so-called wasted years. I think about Caleb this morning. Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 and 24. Let me go quickly here. Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 and 24. And here's what it says. Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes... The reason This is verse 6. And the reason they tore their clothes is because the other spies brought back a bad report and had convinced the people not to go into the land that God had told them He's given to them. And Joshua and Caleb tear their clothes. In fact, in this same uh, chapter, you'll find that they almost thought about stoning Joshua and Caleb. And so Joshua and Caleb rend their garments. They tear their clothes. They're grieved. Skip on down to verse 24 and it says this. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Now go over to Joshua chapter 14, verses 10 through 15. Joshua 14, 10 through 15. The Bible says, Now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. This is Caleb talking. And he says, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both going out and coming in. Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you've heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be the Lord will be with me and I will be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Verse 13 says, Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. 
And the name of Hebron formerly was Kerjoth Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. The Anakim were descendants of the giants. Then the land had rest from war. Yesterday it was in the hands of the wicked, but today it's in Caleb's hands. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Yesterday it was a wicked man's, but today it belongs to the righteous man. I declare to somebody today, your yesterday's about to be over. And the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. You're about to come into your promise. Hallelujah. You've been faithful. You've been following God with your whole heart. And the promise of God is about to come to pass in your life. The promise God gave you maybe years ago is about to be manifest. Hallelujah. In the, re- in the real world, the supernatural is about to invade the natural. Hallelujah. In somebody's life. Come on. Give God praise for it this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here's what I want you to see from this though. The Bible talks about here how Caleb was preserved for the promise and the promise was preserved for Caleb. Caleb says, Joshua, it's time for me to get my inheritance. He says, my strength today at 85 is as strong as it was when I was 40 years old. I'm ready to possess my promise and get those giants out of my house. And off my land. That's what he said, basically. Caleb says, I am ready. My my strength. Listen, God preserved Caleb for the promise. You know all those years you thought you wasted? And the times you said to yourself, well, I guess I'll never get my promise now. It's too late. And, and No, no, no. Here's what God has done for you. The same thing He did for Caleb. God has reserved the promise for you. And God has reserved you for the promise. So you don't have to worry. Listen, you don't have to worry about what other people did to you in your yesterday. Joshua and Caleb could have got upset. They had every right. They were grieved. They could have said, God, that's not fair. Anybody ever said that? I got a few honest people in the house. The rest of you, I'll see you in the altar at the conclusion of this message for repentance. Amen. God, that's not fair. Why is it fair for us to suffer and have to wait these 40 years for our promise when we did everything you told us to do and now we've got to wait around because of all these other people who are doubting and giving a bad report? That's not fair. Can I just encourage you this morning to thank God that He's not fair? Because if God were fair... None of us would be here this morning. We'd all be in hell this morning. Thank God He's not a fair God. It's not about fairness. It's about favor. Hallelujah. And you've got the favor of God on your life. You don't have to have God be fair. You've got His favor today because you're His child. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not necessarily a fair God, but He's a God of favor. Hallelujah to His people. And here's what the God of yesterday, today, and forever will do for you. Just what He did for Caleb. He preserves you for the promise, and He preserves the promise for you. So you don't don't have to worry about what other people did to you. In fact, you need to call your former boss today and say, Thank you for being so mean to me all those years. You need to call that enemy today and say, Thank you for being the low down, good for nothing No, don't say that. Don't say that to him. <laughs> Thank you for what you did. Because of what you did, I've got a promotion. Hallelujah. Because of what you did, I'm on another level with God. Because of what you did, I'm coming in to my promise. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory, glory. Listen, not only do you not have to worry about what other people did, I'm going to help somebody right now. I'm so excited about it myself. I'm going to help somebody. Where are the ushers? We might have to take up a third, a second offering today. This is so good. It's so good. You ready for it? You ready for it? Not only can you more easily forgive other people for what they've done to you, knowing that it's all worked in the plan and the purpose of God in your life, I give you permission this morning to forgive yourself. Because you are not smart enough, you are not strong enough, You are not wise enough 
oh hallelujah, to undo the plan and the purpose of God even in your own life. Hallelujah. Not only can you forgive other people, I give you permission this morning to forgive yourself of what happened yesterday and in your past. Abraham stepped out of faith, but God still honored his faith and gave him the promise. Isaac. Jacob was a deceiver and a conniver. God called him a prince. They sold Joseph into slavery. He went into prison, but he still ended up in the palace. Moses murdered a man, but he still became God's man. David sinned a great and terrible sin. More than one, if you know the story in the life of David. But he was still a man after God's own heart whose lineage would forever rule and reign over Israel and the world because Jesus Christ came from the house and the lineage of David. Peter denied the Lord, but he still became one of the chief apostles. Paul was a murderer and a prosecutor or persecutor of the church, but he became the chief apostle. They crucified Jesus on Friday, but on Sunday he still got up. Hallelujah. Hmm. Nothing other people did to you can thwart the purpose of God in your life as long as you hold on to God. Nothing you did in your past will thwart the purpose and the plan of God in your life. So I give you permission this morning to forgive yourself. I know I've got to close quickly, but here's how God restores. In, in, in Job chapter 42, I believe in verse 10, they may have that one. The Bible says that God restored to Job... When he prayed for his friends, God restored Job's losses and gave him twice as much as he had before. I'm so glad we serve a God of restoration and a God who can restore the years. Hallelujah. Not just the stuff, the years. And when God gives me back, I don't get back the same old stuff I lost. No, no, no. I get better. I get more. I get increased. I get provision. Oh, hallelujah. He's not a God who just gives you back what you lost. No, no, no. He gives you more. He gives you double for your trouble. You ought to praise Him in the house this morning because He's a God who can restore from your yesterday. Hallelujah. He restores better than what was lost. Better than what was lost. I give you again the example of the prodigal son. When that prodigal son came back, don't you know he wasn't the same prodigal son when he left? When he left, he was ungrateful. When he left, he was unthankful. When he left, he was rebellious. When he left, he was in resistance against the Father's will and authority. But that's not the same. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking to some parents of some prodigals today and some spouses of some prodigals today. The same prodigal that was ungrateful and unthankful and disrespectful. That's not the guy that came back. No, no, no. The new man came back. The new man that was, don't you know, he was thankful for every meal. He was thankful for every stitch of clothing. Don't you know when the father said do, he said yes sir. It was a different prodigal that came back. When the prodigal was restored, it was better than the one that lost and left. Hallelujah. That's how God restores. Would you stand with me all over this place? I'm going to ask our Musicians to come back. Kayla, the song leader, and a few to help her. We're going to have a time in this altar as we close this morning. I want somebody to get free in this house today. I want to tell you today there's a difference between freedom and deliverance. The pastor alluded to this last week, I believe it was, and it was something that I told the early service a few weeks ago. There's a difference between freedom and deliverance. And here's the thing with people. We want deliverance. We want to come to the altar and we want somebody to lay hands on us and we want God to do an instantaneous work. And listen to me this morning. I know He can and I've seen Him do it a, a number of times. I've seen God do an instantaneous work, deliver people from addictions and alcohol. I've seen people come to an altar and, and, and lay cigarettes on the altar and never pick one up again. I've seen God do it. He, he's a delivering God. I don't discount that at all. 
but He really only delivers people who want freedom. You say, Pastor, what do you mean by that? Let, let me see if I can explain it to you. If I were to say this morning, I believe there's an anointing here. There's an anointing here to break poverty and lack off of people's lives. Everybody be running up here. Unless you're already wealthy and you don't need anything. If so, if you just meet me after church. At... No, no. Everybody be running up here. But if I say we're going to teach a class about how to, how to help you manage a budget and stay within your means and save money and get out of debt, and the class will be every Wednesday night for the next eight weeks, and, and by the way, it's $25 for the class, we might have eight people show up. And the difference in those two scenarios is some people just want deliverance. They want to spend and say, God, please provide. And they want to spend and get themselves in trouble again financially. And then say, God, uh, I, need, I need some deliverance. I need some help. But the eight people who would come to the class, they want freedom. They, they don't want to just be delivered from debt time and time again. They want to be delivered from debt, but they want to stay out of debt. And stay financially above water. Do you see the difference? There's a difference between freedom and deliverance. You got to be delivered to get free. But once you're free, <laughs> oh, are you getting this this morning? Once you're free, you don't have to be delivered from it again. Deliverance may happen time and time. You, you see what I'm saying? You got to get delivered to be free. But once you're free, Brother Alton, whom the sun sets free, whom the sun sets free, whom the sun sets free. If you want to be free this morning, I want you to come right now. Come on, all over the place. If you want to be free this morning, stand on the dark gray line. We're going to come pray with you. I want some prayer warriors to come, some ushers to come. You want to be free this morning. Whatever it is, if it's a sickness, if it's an illness, if it's a family situation, you want to be free this morning. You want deliverance, that's fine. But, I, but if you really want to be free, I want you to come. You want to be free. Come on. Don't hesitate. Where are my, my prayer partners and my pastors? Come on and help me. Hallelujah. Oh, church, I believe somebody's going to get free today. Somebody's going to get free today. If you're still in the congregation, you need to be doing one of two things. One of two things. You either need to be worshiping with the praise team or you need to be stretching your hand toward these people and helping us pray. One of those two things.